We need the two square sheets of black paper. We are preparing two sheets. The size is 33 to 33 centimeters. Now we are making the diagonal line. I'm using the white pencil that you can see it against the black background. Then each of sheet corners we are connecting to the point where the diagonal line cross and folding the sheet that way. Let us now iron the curvature line with the smooth pencil surface or for example with the, the lighter. We do the same thing for all four sides. Then we unfold the paper. Now fold one of the curves back and fold in one more time connection previous curvature to the opposite diagonal line. That same procedure we repeat with the other side. Now we unfold the sheet of paper again. Let's repeat the same thing with both remained sides. Now we unfold the sheet choosing two opposite top point of the quadrant. Let's make the scissors and take two cuts along the curves that are parallel to the diagonal line coming from the chosen top point of the quadrant. The cut must be made just up to the intersection with another curve that is perpendicular to the cut. So we cut the first and the second quadrant that are made by curves. We repeat the same procedure for the opposite side of the diagonal line on that same angle. The same thing is about the opposite top point. Now we make the box, folding the paper along the curves, starting with larger part of the sheet, then we fix them in this position with the lesser wings. Iron the curves if you want to make the box be accurate. For the second part of the camera we will need the box of the less size that we could put it inside the first one. For this purpose we cut out two strips from two adjacent parts. This size must be 4 cm approximately. Strips wide depends on the paper caliper. It is important that the internal part of the box were fixed in the external one quite tight that the light could not penetrate inside it. At the same time it should be moved quite easily that we could assemble camera in the dark by touch. The lesser internal box of the camera is made the same way as the larger one. So we have now two boxes. One of them will be inserted in the other. Being fully assembled, the box has its depth of 60 mm. Partly moving our internal part, we can regulate the box depth from 60 to 100 mm. The next step is to stick unfixed angles of the box. I use the dry glue pencil as it doesn't deform the paper and is convenient at work. Now we glue the upper parts inside the box in order to fix them. The important thing. Before the glue harden, we can move the gluing surfaces. It's necessary to check how good parts of camera are moving one inside another. That makes the box look accurate. We need the part of film 6 to 9 cm. To make it easier measuring those 9 cm in dark by touch, I prepare two smooth wooden or plastic planks. Important! Their edges must have no edge fins and one of the surfaces must be smooth and without scratches. Then we put them together with their smooth surfaces and fix with the rubber band. The rubber should not be strained to make the job easier. In the dark we put the film, type 120, approximately 60 mm wide, between these planks and cut off the measured piece. Cut frame and the rest of the film should be stored in the black package or in the box where the light could not penetrate. Now we have to make the film holder. It is the piece of black plastic or plank painted black 
The size of our bottom. In our case, we have the plank 11 to 11 centimeters size with the cuts, as you can see. Rubber strips fixing the film have not to move and must be placed at the distance from 7 to 8 centimeters from each other. All the procedures with undeveloped film we usually do in the absolute darkness, but as it is not so easy to make film in the darkness, I'm showing you what would be necessary to do in the darkness, now under the light. It is necessary to place the film inside the black box or in a dark room, within its face to us and with its back to the film holder, fixing film edges with the rubber strips. We make the hole in the box cover with the punch stamp. We will place our tin with the pin hole. We can do it also with a knife, scissors or just lacerate. It's only the question of aesthetics. In order to make the camera reusable and to make easier its recharging, I stick the small wooden or plastic rectangle with the help of two side scotch inside the camera on its back side. The camera thickness allows make a small fissure between the film holder and the box. The rubber strips lay in it and the film is not bent. From the other side we stick to this quadrant the thinnest scorch that can be disposal but helps us easily to charge and discharge the camera. Important. You should be careful to make the film holder fixing camera in a proper way, that it is not unstuck while you transport camera or work with it. Pin hole we will make in the thin sheet of tin. We can cut it out of the can of cola or some other beverage. At first I take off the paint and thin covering with the polishing paper from that part of the sheet where the hole will be. We will drill the hole with the sewing needle. It's better to drill than to pierce the hole. In that case we will have the sheet not deformed. For drilling we will need the hand drill with the very small cartridge where we can clutch the needle as the drill. To have the needle clutched without backlash it's necessary to break off its head as it usually has the broadening. It could be done easier with the pliers. If you can't find the drill you can use the wooden pencil. We put the needle into its blunt part, moving the broken part of the needle into it. So we have the simplest test drill. The diameter of the hole that we will get depends on the size of the needle and on the hardness of the surface where we are drilling. As the pointed end of the needle has the conic form, the diameter depends on how deep the needle will go into the tin sheet. We will have one result using the polished table surface. If we put the glass under the tin, we will get the smallest possible aperture. If we need the larger aperture, we can use different needles or to put paper or cardboard under the piece of tin. How can we control the whole diameter? Usually I use the microscope multiple of 25 and the scale with the division value 0.05 millimeters. Not always having it at hand, we can use magnifying glass with the measuring reticule. Such a unit is quite expensive, but we can get 8-fold zoom and graduated mark of 1.1 mm. It's not so convenient as the microscope, but quite adjustable decision. 
One more way to measure the aperture is to put the tin into the film channel of the magnifier or into the optical lantern together with the calibrated ruler made of transparent material. Taking the magnifier in the upper position, we can measure at the projection visible part of the ruler and making simple mathematic calculation to find out the magnifying index. Then we measure the diameter of the projection of our aperture and knowing the magnifying index we can calculate its real diameter. Through the calculation we can get quite exact figures but we have no information how clear the surface of the aperture is. The magnifying glass can have the booster light, but we can clearly see only the diameter of the hole. If we want to see the shape and the neatness of the aperture, we have to use only skew ray. That's why I use the extra lantern. It's important that the aperture has the roundish shape. After drilling, we can notice by magnifying that the aperture itself reminds the cone and looks similar to moon crater. That's why we need to polish the surface, checking the process from time to time through the magnifier so that the whole edge became even. The labeling of polishing paper from different producers might differ and you might be tricked by them. I usually use the polishing paper of two numbers. The main one is number 200, it's a very fine one and is usually used by car painters. It reminds the usual paper by touch. For the first stage I use the paper with larger abrasive number. The better you polish surface with the fine paper, the better picture you will get. Under home conditions, it's not so simple to get the aperture of exact diameter. Local distance depends on the diameter. So we made the body of the camera, where we can regulate the focal distance to some extent. Focal distance of the pinhole aperture can be calculated according to the form formula. But it's more comfortable to use free distributed program the pinhole designer. We have to put the diameter of our aperture at the aperture and focal distance insertion and to get the optimal focal distance for its usage. It's easy to notice that the best apertures for our type of camera are the holes of 0.35 and 0.44 mm diameter. At the insertion angle F view, we can evaluate the view angle of our system. In our case, we have the picture of 60 to 60 mm size as the upper edge of the film being fixed in the film holder and playing the supporting role. So we will get the picture of larger size through. We will have the black marks at the positive image from the rubber strips. View angle of the camera that we will have to take into account. At the insertion aperture and focal distance, we put the rounded figure of the optimal focal distance. For example, the optimal focal distance for diameter of 0.35 mm is 61.967 mm. So we have to put the figure 62 in the window focal distance. The aperture of the system is 177. Usually exponometers don't have this K allowing to work with the aperture 177. So we have to calculate the exposure for the aperture of 22, taking into account the sensitivity ISO of the photomaterial we use. Also we have to use the multiplier factor.
64.7 in our case to define the exposure time. Practically, as we always have the dependence on the time of exposure for light sensitive materials at high exposures, so called Schwarz Shield effect, it's easier to use the insertion exposure of the mentioned program. Where we put the figure F of our camera, 177 in our case, and having put the option consider the error 4, check the film we are working with. For example, IL Ford HP 5 Plus. Pressing the button Calculate, we have the convenience table where the measured time of exposure by exponometer for the aperture 22 is found against the time we need for our camera. When everything is ready with our aperture and we are satisfied with calculations, we cut the tin to make it looking nice and comfortable in size. Now we take our tin, put it on the front part of the camera box. Now we line up the pinhole aperture with the hole made before in the black paper of the camera. Let's now connect the tin to the camera using the black scotch. One more thing. We cut off the piece of black scotch and use it as a shutter, sticking it over the hole. To make the shutter open easily, we bend the loose ends of it and stick them with each other. Now the ends won't be stuck and it will be easy to open the shutter. If the box is not locked fully as we wished, then before charging the camera we have to wind the external edge of the more narrow part of the box and the external edge of the cover with black scotch. Moreover, we can stick the strip of cardboard so that the box will close up only to the focal distance we need, and we were able to lock it in the darkness in a proper way. Now we only have to fix the cover in desirable position with one more layer of scotch. Inside the black box or in the dark room, we charge the prepared piece of film 60 to 90 millimeters in the film holder of the camera. Film holder is taken and stuck with the prepared scotch inside the camera. Camera assemblage. Now to photographing. In the darkness we charge our part of the film. Development. The procedure is the standardized one. It is described on the film producer's site, in special literature or other special internet site. We control the development time and temperature depending on chosen technical conditions. Then rising and fixing, rinsing and drying. From the negative you get, you can make images with the contact method or using the method of optical projection. Also, you can scan or replicate it.